This podcast is entitled Theoretical and Percent Yield. Um, going back, a little review. We've got a single displacement reaction as seen here. I have a little silver nitrate plus copper metal yields silver metal plus copper nitrate. And the reason why this occurs, if you consult your activity series table, the copper is more reactive metal, so it can displace. The copper can displace the silver, producing silver metal and copper. And it has to do with the hold on the electrons that copper versus silver has. So if we take this reaction and apply it to stoichiometry, and we look at the balanced equation just to review. Remember that the balanced equation is a mole ratio. It is not a gram ratio. And as you can see by the sentence below, in words, it says that two moles of silver nitrate reacts with one mole of copper. So we can use this balanced equation as a mole ratio. So the problem is calculate the mass of copper metal that you need to react with excess silver nitrate. Let's say you needed 5.43 grams of silver for some reason. How much copper would you need to put into the silver nitrate in order to produce this much silver? So stop, do the stoichiometry problem and that before going on. Remember the steps. Did you do this? Did you identify your given? Did you balance the equation? Did you identify what you want to calculate? You might like the mole map. You might like the steps. You have to decide which way works for you. The next slide is the answer, so make sure you have it in front of you before you proceed. How did you do? Okay, so in a different problem, if you think back to the types of reaction lab, you took a piece of copper and you stuck it in the Bunsen burner for a long period of time, and the shiny copper metal changed color and turned like a dark, dull gray color, forming a copper oxide, copper two oxide, as a matter of fact, if you remember when you turned in that lab. Pause for a minute and see if you can do two things, calculate using stoichiometry the mass of copper oxide formed, and how will that mass of the product form compare to the 4.2 grams of copper? Even before doing the calculation, could you predict whether the mass of the product will be the same as, greater than, or less than the copper metal that you began with? Here's the answers. Now look, if you didn't get these correct, this is the time for you to stop, go back, go through the steps for stoichiometry. See if you can do it. If you're still confused, go back and view the earlier podcast on how to do stoichiometry problems. We're proceeding on with the concept of theoretical yield and percent yield in this podcast. So you need to have stoichiometry under control before moving on. So what we've been calculating using stoichiometry is called the theoretical yield. So taking the mass values in the problems, we can calculate the mass of a particular product form. And by thinking about the meaning of the word yield, it does imply that we're talking about the amount of product formed. Theoretical means if everything goes perfectly. So let's say that you did this lab like you did and we did it in a quantitative fashion and you took the copper and you heated it. But instead of getting the 5.6 grams that you were supposed to, you only got 4.9 grams. Somehow or another, you got less than you should have. You might think about what caused this to happen when you did the experiment, if this were you. What mistakes could you have made along the way, experimentally? And the mistakes that I'm talking about are not something like, I copied the mass down wrong. I'm talking about what did you do, perhaps, 
in the procedure that could have caused your value to be less than what was expected. So the question at hand though is, can you calculate the percent yield? Percent yield is like any percent, the part over the whole. Well, since it's percent yield, we're trying to find out how, what percentage did I make out of what I was supposed to make? How did you do? Were you able to take the actual yield, divide by the theoretical yield, and calculate 83% yield? Clearly, she did not obtain what she would have liked to obtain 100%. So what could have caused this problem? Start, be, start thinking about that. That's one of our goals for the quarter, is to begin analyzing our experimental results and come up with some of the errors that could have occurred. When you are working on your Mission Impossible Lab, this is another example of something for you to think about. You will have done the experiment, you will have seen and made, hopefully recorded some observations about some um, times when the product might have been lost, perhaps. So think about that as you're going through experiments from this point forward. Here's another example of a reaction. The combustion of ethanol, remember combustion means burning. Combustion reactions are exothermic. Where should I write the word energy? On the reactant or product side if it's an exothermic reaction? Yes, on the product side. Combustion means reacting with oxygen. Can you write and balance this equation? And then can you calculate the mass of oxygen gas that would react with 7.50 grams of the ethanol? Pause before you begin, before you move on. The answer is on the next slide. Notice each of the steps. Number one is to balance the equation. Number two is to identify your given and what you want to calculate. The third step is to convert grams of your given to moles of your given. The fourth step is to compare moles to moles. And where do we get these numbers, this one and this three? From the coefficients in the balanced equation. Putting one mole in the denominator here is because we had one mole of ethanol in the numerator here. So we wanted these things to cancel. Moles of ethanol, moles of ethanol. And where were we going? To moles of oxygen. So that's why the three, which is the coefficient in front of the oxygen in the balanced equation, goes up on top. Calculating the moles of oxygen, then we want to go to grams of oxygen so we have to remember that oxygen is diatomic. The molar mass of oxygen is 32, not 16, to give us our final answer. So another example. Notice this time I give you no formulas. I'm asking you to write the equation to make sure your formulas are correct, to balance the equation, and then perform the calculations. The calculation of the theoretical yield as well as the actual yield is given to, so that you can calculate the percent yield. Now, let's assume that this is something like a quiz that you would take. And let's say you write an equation and you don't know the correct formulas and you're having difficulty balancing the equation. Do you spin your wheels and spend time trying to balance the equation if you know that probably you have an incorrect formula? No, the answer is move on. Once you've got a reasonable equation, then use the equation, make note of it on the side of your quiz, let's say, and say, I know this isn't correct, but I'm going to use what I have and show you that I can do the stoichiometry. So you'll use the information in your own balanced equation, or unbalanced as the case may be, and you'll show me the rest of the process.
The only part that you would lose points on would be the incorrect formula writing in the very beginning. So recognize the fact that you don't want to waste in a, on a quiz where you can show your work an excessive amount of time trying to balance the equation if the problem goes back to formula writing. Remember, what are the steps for stoichiometry? There's five of them. Do you like the steps or do you use your mole map? Do you know the difference between actual yield and theoretical yield? Make sure that you know the difference there before proceeding. Look at what you have to do on loose leaf. Go back to the problem and that I just gave you and do that problem on loose leaf. The problem where I'm asking the theoretical mass of the precipitate formed and the percent yield. Do that for homework and bring it into class tomorrow tomorrow on loose leaf. And by way of review, if you wanted to check a few homework problems from an earlier night in your book, here are the setups and the answers to problems done on page 890. These were some basic stoichiometry problems. I have set them up in one long line. Notice, for example, this is a three-step problem. The first step is going from grams to moles using this equality. After I find the moles of calcium chloride, then I go moles of given to moles of want using this ratio. And then finally, I go from moles of what I want to grams of what I want. So you could do this in three separate steps, three separate calculations if you wanted to.